Hi there, in this video we're going to take a look at some properties of the Laplacian matrix. In the last video we saw how to generate the Laplacian matrix using Network X and NumPy and we see that we have two tools to do that. We can do that manually by computing the adjacency matrix and the degree matrix and then subtracting the adjacency matrix from the degree matrix but we can also use Network X's Laplacian matrix function to generate that as well. In this video, we're going to look at some properties of the graph Laplacian matrix. And we're going to work our way through some of these and show these properties in this video. The first property is that the Laplacian matrix is symmetric, which means that if you invert the columns and the rows, it will be the same array. And we can verify that very simply here by using the numpy.array equal function. And we take the original matrix L and the transpose of that matrix and you see that that returns true. The Laplacian matrix is symmetric. Its transpose is equal to um, the matrix itself. So what we've got here is the first property. The second property is that the matrix is positive semi-definite. That means that all of the eigenvalues are greater than or equal to zero. And we can verify that the matrix is positive semi-definite using the numpy.lineage.eig function. And we pass into that the Laplacian matrix that gives us back eigenvalues and eigenvectors that we can then use to um, inspect the properties. Now, if it's positive semi-definite, that means that all of the eigenvalues are greater than zero or equal to zero. And you see that that returns false. Now, this is, a, this is because of some small round-off error. If you look at the eigenvalues that are less than zero, you see that it's only the first one. All of the other ones are false. So if we look at the first eigenvalue, you can see that it's a very, very small number, almost an infinitesimal number there. Um, so we can basically count that as zero, and we can say that all of the eigenvalues are indeed greater than or equal to zero. And that's the definition of a positive semi-definite matrix. The Laplacian matrix is positive semi-definite um, because all of its eigenvalues are zero or greater. Now the next property we're going to look at is that every every row and column sum to zero in the Laplacian matrix. Now we can do that by, let's start a new code cell, um, we can simply take the sum of the Laplacian over um, both the row and the column axes. Uh, if I pass axis equals one there, you see that we get two vectors back, that the sum of the rows, the sum of the columns, it's all zero. So that's another property of the Laplacian matrix. All of the rows sum to zero, all of the columns sum to zero. And the next property we're going to look at is this property here. So the implication of this is that the Laplacian matrix is singular. So we're going to see what that means now. Remember there is some small round off error in these examples, so it might not be totally accurate, but we can look at the definition of a singular matrix now. It's basically one that cannot be inverted. So if we try and take the inverse of the Laplacian matrix, this is actually not invertible. We get a Linalge error, which means that, um, as it says here, it's a singular matrix. It cannot be inverted. And another way to check whether or not a matrix can be inverted is by looking at its determinant. And the determinant of the Laplacian is zero. It's singular. It has no determinant. Um, and similarly, we can see, look at the condition number, and that's a massive number there. The condition number, if it's very high, it tells you that a matrix is basically uninvertible. So you can look at the determinant, you can look at the condition number, and you can try the, inver um, the inverse operation to determine whether a matrix is invertible in NumPy. So that's another property. The Laplacian is singular. Um, in addition to that, let's have a look at this one here. The second smallest eigenvalue of the Laplacian is called the algebraic connectivity or the Fiedler value. Um, so let's have a look at how to get that in Network X. Network X has a function called algebraic co connectivity and you can pass the graph in there and it will automatically compute this number, 1.12 in this case. Now the question is what is that number? Um, now I'm not going to go into a technical definition of the algebraic connectivity in this lesson. What we can do is see that this is approximately equal to the second smallest eigenvalue. If we sort the eigenvalues, we see that the second smallest one here is at index one. 
and if we then print both of these out you can see that there is a bit of a discrepancy between the numbers but they are essentially the same and what this is saying is that the algebraic connectivity is equal to the second smallest eigenvalue of the Laplacian matrix. So that's another property there. There are a lot of good resources to read about the algebraic connectivity of graphs. It's an interesting property. And the final one I want to look at here is the last one. The trace of the Laplacian matrix L is equal to 2M, where M is the number of edges in the graph. So let's have a look at that. We know how to compute the trace. That's simple in NumPy. We just say np.trace and pass in the Laplacian. And we'll get a trace of 30 here. Now the, the trace, the definition of the trace is just the sum of the diagonals. So the trace should be equal to the, the sum of the diagonals of the Laplacian matrix. Now what the, what the property is telling us is that the trace is equal to two times the number of edges. So in network x you can get the number of edges using the g.edges function and calling uh, the len on that. g.edges will return uh, what is an edge view I believe, a list of edges and we can call length to get 15 and obviously 2 multiplied by 15 gives you 30 so the trace is indeed equal to 2 times the number of edges in the graph so the trace of the Laplacian is equal to that. So that is a, another video here on some of the properties of the Laplacian matrix. Um, this is a very interesting matrix in machine learning, in graph theory and in network science. So it's well worth reading up more on some of this stuff here. NumPy and NetworkX are very good tools for computing some of these properties. And we're just scratching the surface here. In the future we're going to get stuck into some real data sets of network data. But for now, if you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe. I'm going to put a Jupyter Notebook on GitHub with some of this code uh, in a bit of a more palatable format. But for now, that's all and thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.